Project Egg Show. I'm your host, Ben Gothard, and today we have the honor of speaking with Stacey Chalemi. How are you doing today, Stacey? Hi, how are you, Ben? I am wonderful, and I'm so excited to chat with you today because I really want to ask, what is your story? You know, it started a, a long time ago. You know, I always had an interest in, in health, but you know, in the beginning, it all started, I was working in the city and I was working for a very big corporation. And, um, you know, I was really into like marketing and advertising and working with, you know, different TV shows. And I was on a, a lot of TV shows doing the back end. And as time went on, um, you know, I suffer from epilepsy. Like I developed it at the age of five and um, at the end, and it was uh, for a long time, they, they were trying to get my seizures controlled and they were having a really difficult time. So when I was working in the city, I was still having seizures and I was still, uh, you know, struggling with my epilepsy. And then there was a time where I had a seizure. I had fell to the floor and actually one of the producers kept walking and he walked over me and he kept walking. And then 30 minutes later, um, one of the associate producers came over and they told me that I didn't really meet their requirements and, you know, that, you know, they're sorry, but they're going to have to let me go. And back then, you know, I, I didn't really think about it too much. Like, you know, I was, I was hurt, I was upset, but I wasn't going to let it, you know, get me down. So, you know, I kept, you know, thinking, you know, about different things that I really wanted to do. And, you know, I was getting married soon and I was doing the whole thing. So I was just focusing on, you know, what I had ahead and I figure, you know what, I'll find something that's right for me. You know, there's, you know, for everybody, there's always something out there. Everybody has has a purpose in life. That's what I believe. And, you know, in time, you know, I think we all go through things in life because, you know, it's a journey where we find our weaknesses and our strengths and, and eventually we find our purpose. And that's what we need to really focus on is our purpose in life. And so as time went on, I had always had a strength in writing and I was always very good at it. So I, I was, you know, in the process of writing a book to, during that time. And I, so I opened up my own freelance business and I started writing and I started uh, doing different things uh, with different organizations. And they had me come to like, uh, Washington to speak in front of Congress about a lot of different topics like um, job discrimination and helping people with disabilities. And so I was, you know, as I was writing um, and like I told you, I was had, I, I was writing a freelance business, I had met an herbal, um, an herbalist, and he was uh, really into helping and healing the body naturally. So he had me do a lot of research and writing for him. And so as I was researching, a lot of the stuff sounded really interesting. And I was always into health. And I was always that was always one of the things I, I did a lot on the background. So I started applying a lot of the stuff that I was learning to my own, my own uh, body. And my seizures went from nine seizures to six seizures to three to two. And, you know, with the usage of the medication that the doctors were giving me and by applying, you know, different ways, lifestyle changes and different ways of eating, my seizures became controlled. And I was able to actually, you know, I, I, at that point, I, you know, I was writing and I started a little blog on Blogger and I had like about 400 people, you know, and then all of a sudden I was doing work for a, a website guy and he you know I would write his content you know, he would make websites and I would write the content he's like you know I can make this into something really amazing for you and so he created a website for me and the website went from we went from to uh, it was 400 to 10,000 to 300,000 people. And it just grew and grew and grew. And people were like, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are really interested in natural health and healing the body. And people don't want to always have to rely on medication. They want to be able to, you know, focus on, you know, doing stuff for themselves. So it was great. You know, during this process, I was meeting so many different people. I was helping people. People were asking me to do speaking events and to talk about health to talk about my own experience and you know it was just like a total turnaround it was like you know I you know I always pictured myself having martinis on a Friday night working for big this big corporation and working on TV shows and one day I'll be on one of those TV shows doing one of those news programs and it ended up totally opposite where here I am reaching out to others and helping people and helping people improve their health and their lives and it was totally different but you know I took a you know my life led me into a wholly di totally different path and actually I'm doing something that I actually love so that's the, the most the, the greatest part I tell people all the time when they're they're focused on what to do in life you know make sure it's something that you love something that you have a passion for you know 
so that's where I am right now. I'm just like, you know, I have my, my business with uh, the Complete Herbal Guide, and I do a lot of speaking events, and I help a lot of people and do a lot of health coaching, trying to help people teach themselves how to change their lifestyles to make themselves feel better healthy and healthy wise and, you know, and do that type of stuff. You alluded to, um, to, to purpose. Mm-hmm. And, and I believe I heard you were talking about how everybody has their purpose. Oh, most definitely. And I agree with you. I absolutely agree. And I'm curious to learn, and you kind of talked about it, but I want to ask directly, like, what is your purpose? I really feel like, you know, I didn't realize it till later on, but I felt, you know, I had written um, an article and, and um, I had started writing a book, like I was telling you, and it was called Epilepsy, You're Not Alone. And that book, uh, at that time, there weren't many books on the, on the subject. And, you know, someone had wrote me back and sent me an email and they found my book in Barnes and Nobles and they said they picked it up. They were on the verge of committing suicide because they had gotten the dis- disorder. They were taking seizures. They lost their job. They you know they couldn't take care of their family anymore and you know they just they could they lost their license they couldn't do anything they felt trapped they just didn't see a purpose for them and and then they read my book and they you know they followed my regiments and my advice and she said that she had a totally different you know a different view on life that she she followed it and she said that she realized that she has a purpose in life that she has you know that she's meant to be on this planet and she said my book gave her hope and strength and she now she's she's actually living with it she learned how to cope with it and she moved on in life and it was at that point where I didn't realize it but words have such an impact on people's lives and you don't realize it but the things that you do and you say can impact a person's life so much and at that point I realized how powerful words are and you know and and that's when I realized that that was my purpose I was here to help people I was here to use the 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 abilities that I was given and I would to, to help others and that's what I focused on all those years I've been trying to do things to help others because everybody in this world has something you know you can't nobody's perfect we all have something whether it's a sleep disorder or a condition or a disease everybody has something and you know and it, I, I want to be the person out there trying to help these people the best I can. And that's what my focus is on. And I think too, when you do things you love, you really have an energetic and powerful impact and people see that and people draw to you, you know? So it's always, you know, that you can, as time goes on, you kind of have to listen to yourself, finding your purpose. I, I always say, it's not your brain that's talking to you. It's your heart. And you got to go with what your heart tells you. And that's, you know, it's really stop listening to others and start listening to yourself. Listen to your heart. I love that answer <laughs> um, because I feel like it's a really important distinction um, of the, this, this greater, almost ethereal purpose of helping people, but then actually being able to manifest that through the writing, through right the speaking through the health challenges and, and the knowledge of over uh, of how to overcome those health challenges. So what I, what I really want to want to ask is getting, getting concretely aware of this purpose. Does that come before building out or, or honing the skills that are the vehicle to accomplish that purpose? Or do they happen simultaneously? Is there a chronology or does it just, you know, is it just random? Does it just happen? I think we all have the skills. I think sometimes we don't acknowledge them at first. I think sometimes, you know, you, sometimes we're so focused on what, you know, we thought we wanted to do, or we focus on what society, we, we think society, what we should do, you know, and we don't really focus on our true strengths. Like I had someone tell me, you know, they focused on a career and they, they did it because they knew that, you know, you can get, a, you get, you can get a lot of money and make, you know, have a good life, you know, doing, doing a specific type of career, but it wasn't what they truly loved. And then it was later on that they did, you know, they realized, you know, this isn't making me happy, you know, and they did a total turnaround and they focused on what really made them happy. And it was then that they actually became successful. You know, it's like we all, you know, it's like, what do you love to do in life? And how can we turn that love into an actual career? You know, because it not only, you know, it, it, it 
brings happiness because you, you can, you can do the things you love and you can make a living out of it and, and have a, a happy life, you know, and that's the best thing is being able to get up in the morning and do the things that actually make you happy and not have to, you know, get up and, and, you know, cringe every time you get out of bed because you know, you're going somewhere where you don't want to be. And you know that maybe you're not making the greatest pay in the world, but you don't know, there's not no other options out there. So you're kind of feel like stuck. So it's like, then what do you do? And sometimes you have to like look within yourself and think, you know, what are the options? Because there's always options, you know, we just have to be courageous and, and want to just actually jump into it and try it. I could agree more. I, and, and especially on the piece of we always have options. And, and I think the nuance there is we, I believe we do always have options. Sometimes I think, and of course, it's just my opinion, that it's sometimes it's hard to recognize those options. Oh, most definitely. It definitely is. And, you know, it, it has to do too sometimes with self esteem, confidence. You know, a lot of people are scared of change. People fear change, you know, and, and you know, they know they're in a safe zone and, you know, they're, they're terrified, you know, and you, sometimes you don't realize it, but some people are so, they think of the worst thing that could happen. Every decision they make, they think of the worst thing first, instead of trying to focus on the positive and thinking what good can come out of this, you know, because you could always go back, you know, you could always go backwards, but it's hard sometimes to go forward. But, you know, sometimes really great things can happen by taking a chance and you have to just build on your self-esteem and your confidence too because it takes a lot of confidence to take chances in life and to do things that are new you know but if you ha if you have that strength and you you take those chances you know you can't you know you can't lose you know what's the worst thing that could happen it doesn't work out for you so then you go back to what you were originally doing you know what i'm saying so it, you know it's always great to take chances but people sometimes don't always think of it like that i agree so when when you were thinking about the skills that you were the best at, and, and it seems like from an earlier point, an earlier age, you had identified writing mm -hmm. as kind of your, uh, your craft, if you will. Um, how did you actually go about making that decision? And, you know, we talked a little bit about recognizing our gifts, our skills, and, but, but maybe it, it doesn't seem like that's what we're the best at, or maybe we just don't want to recognize it. So what was the actual process you went through the decision-making process of, okay, I'm going to focus on writing and maybe you didn't go through this, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Yeah. I'm going to focus on writing. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to hone this craft. You know, I, I went out and I kind of like, I, I kind of, you know, I started, I started, when I started writing, I also contacted a lot of people in the field, you know, and I was, you know, I was asked to write different, different um, pieces for different books. And, you know, and then, so, you know, some editors of these books, you know, contacted me and they said, you know, we really like your stuff, but you know, this is what, you know, I was focusing on the wrong things, or I was doing things, you know, that aren't the greatest way of doing things, you know, and people actually, they they knew I had the abilities and they were a couple steps ahead of the game and they actually wanted to help me and a lot of times you'll find you know if you actually reach out and you you know the best way to learn is to be open-minded and to reach out and you'd be so surprised because everybody started at not everybody was given everything and a lot of people remember where they they came from and a lot of people want to help others and that was the thing there were so many people who had succeeded in my field you know and they wanted to help me because they saw that I had certain strengths and they wanted me to build on those strengths so they reached out to me and they said Stacy you know you're you're great in this and but you need to get better and this is what you need to do and, you know, and I had people who ripped up my writing and, and not ripped physically, but, you know, they, they, they pointed out every little error in, in that you imaginable and that you've got to start doing it this way, not this way, you know, and even like people came up to me and said, you know, you're amazing with speaking. You really impact people when you speak, you know, and sometimes we don't realize these things ourselves or we just, you know, our confidence might not be there yet. You know, we might not, we, you know, sometimes we see other people's strengths. But we don't, we don't give ourselves enough of credit too. you know, we sometimes we, you know, we should step behind, you know, a couple of steps and, and really look at ourselves where we were at and where we are now and give yourself a pat on the back. You know, there's nothing wrong with giving yourself a pat on the back, you know, and I think we never, people never really do that that much, but, you know, you have to always think, 
where did you come from and where you are now? And you know what? And then I always say, make long-term goals and short-term goals. And you know, and you don't have to do it right away. You know, it's like every day is a stepping stone, you know, and with those, you give yourself challenges and you, you know, and it's not failure if you don't reach those goals, you know, it's just, it, they're, they're, they're ways of giving yourself momentum to move forward and to succeed, you know? So it seems like for, in your experiences, that you were already writing and somebody reached out to you or, or a couple people reached out and they were they extended the helping hand and really kind of sh- kind of uh, put put more light kind of put the spotlight on that skill and they were like yeah. hey this is you know this is this is awesome before that happened why did you start writing? Like, how did you come to the conclusion? I'm going to begin the, I'm going to begin the journey as a writer. Like, how did that decision making process go down? You know, when I was struggling with epilepsy, I started making a journal and I started writing all my feelings and all my thoughts on paper. And then, you know, and then I real, and then I would try to make goals for myself. I'd make long-term goals, short-term goals, what I was going to do, how I was going to just, you know, not let this disorder this get me down. I was going to move ahead. And, I, you know, I wanted to, there was no reason why I should let a disorder stop me from being the person I wanted to be. I might not be exactly the person that, you know, know we all we all you know we all have that little thing expectation in our head and we all probably you know it's it's probably unrealistic but you know you always want to reach a certain level you know but sometimes we're not meant to be at that certain level you know sometimes you know and it's like I just I gave myself like short-term goals and long-term goals and then I started writing journals and then I started writing taking pieces from the journals and writing articles out of them spinning them into articles and then I was getting such great feedback people were telling me how I was helping them and how this is great. Oh, you should write a book. I ended up writing 20 books, you know, over the course of my life, you know, it was like, and then, and then I actually had like one doctor, you know, like he, um, he came up to me and he said, you know, Stacy, you really should write a book on this because it's, it's amazing. Your, your story is amazing. And the next time I saw him, I had a script in my hand and he actually reached out to his publishing agency and he helped me get the book published. And I was actually, that book was actually the first book published um, in their, in their publishing house that, that wasn't a doctor. I was the first person that wasn't a doctor that they actually published my book because they just were, they just were so like, you know, they, they loved it. They, you know, and that was such a great feeling to be, you know, everyone in that publishing house was a doctor that got published. And I was the first person who, you know, wasn't a doctor, but they thought my writing was great. They thought the message was great and they published my book. So, you know, that was like a kind of inspiration like you know hey wake up you have a talent use it you know and it's like you know and so I kept moving forward and I'll tell you one thing you know it's not the money the, the ability to help somebody, the ability to, to actually be able to, to improve someone else's life is such a great feeling. You know, not only are you helping yourself because you learn every day in this field, but you're actually able to help others. And that's a great feeling, you know, to reach out, you know, because anyone can make money and everything. A lot of times people forget and sometimes people get too in, in, engulfed in making money and they lose the purpose, you know, because it, life, you know, you know, it's, it's it's, it's nice to live comfortable and have a great life, you know, money wise, but that doesn't bring you happiness. You know, you know, you have to be happy with who, with who you are and your, yourself. And that comes into doing the things you love and the things that make you feel good. And that's when people succeed as an entrepreneur or they succeed in their, in their, in, in a business because they're doing something they really love and you can see it, you know, and people could see it, people around them. So it seems like, in the very beginning, it was that natural creative expression or that that natural catharsis yeah. that you actually needed to heal and to 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 just express. Right. Yeah. Because at that point, I was really at a low, you know, I was feeling depressed. I was feeling like, what's my purpose in life? I felt like every time I took three steps forward I got knocked back two steps like it was like you know it was like my my disorder was holding me back from doing the things I wanted to do you know I I wasn't getting to the point that I wanted to get and and it's really hard like when you suffer from anything anything in life when you know you're you have the ability to be here 
and then you can't get there because of your disability. It's like your 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 brain is taking you here, but your body and that disorder is you know hold, pushing you back because every time you push yourself, you had a seizure from the stress or this or that, and you couldn't you know, and it was just like it, it, you just couldn't get to the point you wanted to, and that's when depression sets in. That's when your self esteem gets hit, you know, and then you just you figure out like what the hell am I here for? You know, why is this happening to me? So many people with disorders or disabilities or diseases feel angry because, you know, it, you know, it gets, you, people get fatigued and people get tired. People can't do the things they want to do. And it's frustrating, you know? And so it's like all these negative emotions, how do we get rid of it? How do we, how do we heal it? How do we focus on the stuff we really love and how do we make something of our lives? So we feel good as a person. And that was where, you know, it all started trying to heal myself. And then when I figured out how to heal myself and I did heal myself, then I wanted to help others because I knew there was, I met so many people just like me out there that struggled with not just epilepsy, but everything, diabetes, you know, you know, heart problems, this, that, you know, and it's just like, you know, if I could heal myself, I don't have to focus on epilepsy. I could focus on everything, you know, because the things I did for myself were standard you know, and so, you know, positive thinking and changing the way I sleep, changing the way I eat, you know, just focusing on how I handle stress and how I cope with life, not letting the big little things in life get to me, focusing on the things I have to, and just not letting it overwhelm me, and, you know, things like that. So these are things that everybody struggles with and wants to learn about. So that's, you know, that's how I made my website and my books and my speaking events. And people really, really drew to it. And they really, you know, they were appreciative and and I didn't even realize it, but they told me that it, it changed them so much. It helped them so much. And I was like, really? I was like, you know, because you don't really give yourself enough of credit. You don't think, you know, that what you have to say will impact the person next to you. And even you, you, you talk about business and entrepreneur and, and, you, and you help people, you know, you know, get their their abilities to, to go out and make a, a helpful and, and strong career. You know, people don't, there's so many people who want to, but just don't know where to start or they just, you know, are too scared or or they just need somebody out there, you know, to give them the direction, you know, and things like this help people and, and can change people's lives. I agree. <laughs> I agree so, so much. And, and I appreciate uh, what, you know, what, what you said. Uh, and, and, you know, I also want to comment on, on the fact that it seems like when you were at you know, at this, at this low point or, or at this, this place of, just pain a feeling like of knowing that, you know, your ambition was up here, but I mean, you had physical limitations yeah. that you, you just, you physically could not get there. And that I can only, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what that's like. I can only imagine how painful that must be. And out of that pain, the, out of that came go, getting through that, that is where you kind of tap, not kind of, you tapped into this new skill, this new path that has now taken you to incredible places. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> And, you know, like when I, when I was really, when I was trying to get controlled and, and there was a point where my doctors asked me, I, you know, they didn't want me driving until I can get controlled until everything was, you know, till my health was, was back to normal. And, you know, for 15 years, I, I didn't drive. I just, you know, and that's when I, I worked from home and, you know, in a sense, you felt like you were actually like uh, imprisoned in your own home, you know, because you couldn't, you know, you had to ask other people to help you. And for me, I'm an independent person. I don't like to ask for help, you know, so that was like, to me, it was like, it was torturous, you know, but that was a time when I had, like I told you, I started my freelance business and I wrote some, I wrote some really inspiring stories. Even Jack Cranfield, he, he wrote his books. He, uh, his, his, you know, it was his, his, uh, a lot of his editors came out and, and they were like, you know, they wanted me to, to work with them and, you know, help them with a lot of stories. And it was like, you know, and that it was just little things that kind of led, you know, to, to the place I am today. And, you know, now my life is completely opposite of where I began, but, you know, it all started where I took something that was negative and I turned it into a positive, you know, and then I made it into a whole, you know, career. And, and now I, I not only help myself, but I'm helping hundreds of, of others and, and it's a great feeling. 
It's amazing. So let's talk about uh, because it seems like you've done a lot of work, uh, both you know professionally of writing, honing your craft, and um, you know building your audience, of building your business. But uh, I would also uh, you know venture to say that you've probably done a lot of work on yourself too. Oh, yeah. And, you know, asked yourself some really hard questions and, um, you know, wrestled with uh, just a lot of internal uh, growth opportunities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what have been some of those? And, and I know we talked about them a little bit, but I want to, again, ask uh, directly, what have been some of those um, transformations and, and what were some of the biggest lessons that you've learned up until now? I really had to focus on like, you know, I, I worked, like I said, like, you know, I was, I had low self-esteem in myself because I was just not, you know, I was not the person that I wanted to be. And I didn't think, I wasn't sure if I ever could reach that, you know? And then I also, when in the beginning, I noticed that I compared myself to others. And I think that's one of the worst things you could do. You sometimes, you know, everybody's different. We all have different strengths and weaknesses. We all are our own person. And, you know, and it, you can't really compare yourself to others. You know, you really should just focus on yourself, you know? And like I said, I was, I was feeling depressed because I was not at the place in life I wanted to be. And, you know, when you get depressed too, you, you can, when you, fall into a specific you know era like a like a hole it's very hard to get out of that hole and you know I really you know I had to work on feeling good about myself feeling good about who I was and really accepting me as a person and loving myself and realizing that this is who I am I have to accept myself and I have to move on and that's what I did I you know I had this this is who Stacy is I love her I accept her, you know, this is what life has given me and I got to take it and I got to roll with it. And that's exactly what I did. And I just, you know, little by little, I started feeling good about myself. I feel, started feeling stronger and I just kept going and just kept trying to make the best out of it. It almost reminds me of, uh, of some text in Self-Reliance by uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson. In, the, in in that piece, he actually talks a little bit about – it's it's top of mind because I read it recently. Mm -hmm. um, but, but he actually talks about, look, we are who we are, mm -hmm. and like we're – we are who – you know, like that's what we've got. Like, right. And, and we are good enough. Yeah. And so accepting ourselves for who we are, mm -hmm. not, not saying – that we don't want to improve and get better, but, but almost like being self-aware and understanding like, this is where I am right, right now. Like, mm -hmm. this is the reality of the situation. Yeah. At that point, it's like, okay, now you recognize your strengths, you recognize mm -hmm. your weaknesses, and you can make a game plan that's realistic based right. on, and not realistic in like the don't aim high. Not at all. I'm like the biggest proponent of aiming high. Yeah. But like, but realistic in the in in terms of like, don't ask a fish to climb a tree. Realistic, like like right. understanding what you're actually good at. And, yeah. And so, you know, I wanted to to comment on that because I thought it was interesting that the parallels there. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm just so fascinated by the, this concept of self awareness, right? So when did it really click for you, of Oh, this is who I am. Oh, the, these are, you know, the, this is who Stacy is. These are the the qualities that I have. Okay, got it. Now let's rock and roll. When did that? When did that happen? You know, it was it was when I started writing my first book. When I told you about epilepsy, you're not alone. What I did was is. I started in college, but I never finished. It was when I got out of college, I actually finished the book. But when I started in college, I was, my seizures were not good at that time. So like late night studying and, you know, the stress of college, I was taking seizures. So I wrote an article into the Epilepsy uh, Foundation. They have a magazine and I asked them to publish it. And I asked people, how do you cope with this disorder? And I got so many stories. I got like three to 400 letters from all over the United States and Canada, people sharing their life story with with me sharing how they live with it and I realized you know what I'm not the only one with this there were so many people just like me with the same thoughts the same feelings you know 
And then when I started putting those stories into the book, and then I started applying a lot of the advice that they gave me, I learned from these people. And I learned that, you know, I'm not alone. I'm just like them. They're just like me. We're, you know, people, there's thousands of people out there. I'm not going to feel sorry for myself. I'm going to accept who I am. I'm going to love myself and I'm going to move on and do the best I can and, you know, and, and see what life, you know, takes me. And that's what I did. And, you know, and that's when I started applying to their advice to my life. And, and a lot of these things were working. And then I added some other things to it. And that's when I put all that advice into the book. And then, you know, I just, you know, people were thanking me for the book. And that's when how it all just like started rolling. And, you know, and I started feeling good about myself. And I started feeling stronger and that inner strength. And I always say faith, courage, wisdom, strength, and hope. And when you put all those words together and you apply it to your life, you're, it's amazing what was going to happen to you. That's amazing. <laughs> so let's talk about right now. Mm -hmm. um, again, staying on this on this theme of um, you know working on 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 ourselves and um, really understanding more of who we are at our core. Right. Um, what questions do you still have about yourself now? Where are you working on yourself at this current moment? I think at this current moment, I, I'm still trying to figure out, you know, like I always put my, I see myself always put in higher goals, but then it's like, sometimes I wonder, am I really meant for those goals? Like sometimes I feel like, you know, like I always believe like, you know, like, you know, I'm always one for like the spirits and, you know, and, and the messages, like we always get messages. We got to be aware of what those messages are. And I always feel like the spirits and, and, and God is always talking to us, you know, as corny as that might sound. And sometimes you get little messages here and there, but, you know, every time I try to really strive higher, it seems like life takes me back down. So, you know what? I had, I had to stop and think, you know what, maybe I should just be appreciative for where I am right now. I have a successful business. I have a happy marriage. I have fa a great family. Maybe I'm not meant to be all the way up here. Maybe I'm meant to be over here and maybe I should just focus on this level and, you know, really, you know, build on this level and not so much worry about where, you know, how high I want to be, but actually focus on now and focus on, because sometimes when you focus on what you can be or where you should be, you don't put a hundred percent into where you are now. And then things aren't as good as they should be. And then, you know what? Quality matters. It's not quantity quality. So really, you know, stop trying to focus so much up on top, focus on what you have right now and build on it. And, you know, and you'll see like things start to actually work out even better. People, you know, people notice the quality, people notice the, the, the greatness, you know, you could have like, you know, you could have a website with three articles and they could be amazing articles and you could have a million people come to your website. You could have a thousand articles and they could be all shit and nobody comes to the website. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, it's really about quality, you know, and focusing on what you have and just keep building on it because that's what really matters. You know, it's just, it's like, you know, sometimes you could have goals, but just really focus on where you're at right now and the, and the, and, you know, really build on that and, you know, build on, you know, being the best you can, you know, and then whatever is meant to be is going to just come, you know, if you're meant to be up there, eventually you will be, but if you're not, you know, you're going to be staying at this level, but be happy, you know, you should be happy with it because, you know, I always had to look back and say, you know, there's so many people that have a lot less or have, you know, can't get there, you know, and you've gotten there. So be happy, be appreciative. Sometimes we take for granted and we don't appreciate what we actually have, you know, and that's what you got to do too is not, you know, you could have goals, but focus on making your business or focus on making your everything that you have right now the best it possibly can. And don't don't try to overstress yourself either. You know, I, I've noticed sometimes I put too much energy and then I get drained. And then what good are you when you're drained? So it's like, you know, every day, you know, put in some, you know, but don't overdo it, you know, you know, be realistic. So, because if you drain yourself, then you're not good because you're, you're too tired and then you lose the momentum because you just don't want to do it right now. So then where does your business or where does your, you know, you know, what you're doing where does it go you know so really take each day one day at a time do the best you can that day and then the next day will happen and then you you know you just keep going in and going so uh, 
Stacy, I, I want to thank you very, very much um, for uh, coming on the show and oh, thank uh, you. and and uh, you know sh- sharing this time with me. It's um, been very meaningful for me, uh, and and I want to be very respectful of your time. So, do I have one more question for you? Sure. Um, then uh, then then we'll wrap it on up. All and right. I I want to ask specifically from um, my perspective, from the perspective of a, a 24 year old, mm-hmm. um, what question should I be asking you that I just wouldn't think to ask? Oh, wow. Let's see. Um, I guess, uh, Ooh, that's a hard question. Um, I guess, uh, what, you know, what really are the important aspects to focus on, I guess, you know, because when you're 24, I think, you know, when I, when I was 24, I thought I could do it all. And, you know, and I, you know, and sometimes we don't realize, and you know what, I think the biggest thing is too, you think you know it all, I think, you know, and I realized that you always, you know, and as I gotten older, I realized you have to be open-minded. And you know what, and you can't listen to everybody, but the people who have succeeded in life and that are doing the things you want to do, oh, you know, listen to them. If they, if they give you advice or if they have something really good to say, take it in, you know, you may not agree with everything they're saying, but, you know, think about it, absorb it, and then maybe use some of that information to help you out, you know, and help your business out. Because, you know, I know at 24, I didn't want to really hear too much of what everyone else had to say, you know, you, you know, I felt like I could do it all, you know, I was infallible, you know, and the, when I got older, I realized, you know, every day I'm learning. And every day, you know, people are throwing out stuff and I learn from people and you really have to just focus on the people that really know their stuff in your field that really, that have, they're at the levels that you want to be one day. So they're actually doing something right. So those are the people you want to listen to and even ask advice because they're, you know, they obviously know what they're doing. Well, again, thank you so, so much, Stacey, for coming on the show today. Thank uh, you for having me. And, uh, you know, again, I, I really do appreciate your time. and It's been very special. So thank you very much. And to everybody who is watching and listening, I want to thank y'all very, very much. Um, <laughs> y'all rock. And, uh, you know, the whole purpose of the show is really to help you turn your dreams into reality. And so, uh, you know, I think this episode has been really powerful, um, especially talking about, uh, you know, about purpose and, and self-awareness and finding, um, you know, really finding your way uh, almost – by going, going into the obstacles that um, may seem like the biggest challenges at the time. So I think there were a lot of really powerful themes here. So um, thank you again, Stacey. Thank you to everybody thank you. who's watching and listening. And I will see you all on the next episode. Take care now.